I have to say that my wife and I have grown a lot of seedlings before, but this is the first time we've grown seedlings this wildly successful. This absolutely blows my mind what's going on here. These are seedlings that my wife started, I think, two weeks ago. But I want you to look at the size of those leaves and how stocky and sturdy and thick that plant is. We have several different plants growing here. We got cantaloupe, okra, and a new plant that she's trying out, which is called tatsumi. But all these different varieties of plants here are doing amazingly well. Huge growth. We're having to spread them out, obviously, because they're overlapping each other, but we could not be happier with the success of this planting. Now if she is using some kind of a planting soil medium, it doesn't really make any difference. I prefer sand and sawdust. So let me tell you what we're doing and what we think is causing this to be so successful. First of all, we've got a heat mat down here. And we have the heat mat set to 80 degrees. Right now it's 77.9 degrees. So I would, even though it's 77.9, I would probably say that it's gonna be 80 degrees over here where the pots are. So we've got the, seed, the soil warm. In order for seeds to properly and quickly germinate, the soil temperature needs to be between 70 and 85 degrees. So that we are achieving with the heat mat and the thermostat. Now, of course, as always, I will have links for all these items below this video so you can duplicate and have these great results yourself. The second thing that we've done is we are following the Midlatic Gardening Method recommendation of using burlap to water through to the soil. And we use burlap or you can use cheesecloth so you don't disturb the seed and turn it or spin it in the soil, which would cause it to die. So that is working really well. So what we do is we water this down in the morning. Once that's moist, then we'll pull this back and see if we have anything germinating. Once the seeds have germinated, then we pull them up and put them here underneath the grow light. This, now this seedling right here germinated yesterday afternoon. And look the size of that plant. It's just absolutely going crazy. Wow, look at the roots on that thing. That is amazing. That seed literally came up yesterday afternoon because I saw it and moved it over from here to over there. So again, we're putting the seedlings as soon as they break ground over here underneath the light. And then I think a key factor is we're feeding it the mint lighter constant feed. The mint lighter constant feed is two tablespoons of mint lighter weekly feed mixed in with three gallons of water. Then what we do is we just take a spatula, stir it up, and we're ready to feed. And then we will water e either with the watering can that's in the mint lighter gardening course book, where you just take an old can and punch holes in the bottom and use that as a watering can. But lately what we've ended up using is this because the leaves are so thick, it's hard to get any of the water through the watering can down into the soil. So we're using this to get underneath the plant and right under the soil. And I think because the plants are getting all the nutrients that they need, they're getting the right temperature that they want, and they're getting all the light that they want, they are really, really growing well. These will all be leaving tomorrow, and they'll be getting planted in the mid ladder demonstration garden at the Master Garden location in Conroe, Texas. There are four Midlighter Demonstration Gardens there right now, and if you want to learn more about what's going on there and see photographs, you can go to midlighterdemogarden.com. My wife is running that website right now. Over here you see that we've got slips for our sweet potatoes. Those will be going into the ground very quickly. And in the back, you can see the sweet potatoes actually in the jars of water. And that's where we're getting our slips from. They're not underneath the lights. 
they're next to the south facing window. To learn more about how to grow sweet potatoes, check out my sweet potato video link below this video. And lastly, one of the major ingredients in the success is this grow light. We have used grow lights in the past. We use single and double grow lights. This one actually has six lights in it. And we can adjust it so you can have two lights on, four lights on, or six lights on. You can see using this particular grow light that we're further than an inch above the plants. And that's just because there's so much heat coming out of these T5 bulbs that if we get too close, we've actually had plants getting burned. So we've got about three or four inches here, maybe more above the plants. We would have had it probably a little bit lower if we didn't have the sweet potatoes over here. And because we don't want them getting up there and getting burned. But anyway, I highly, highly recommend this grow light. We bought this online. I'll, again, I'll have the link to the lowest price I found online. And then on top of this, I ordered this ratchet set. It comes with two ratchets and it allows us to raise and lower the grow lights very, very easily. This connection here came with the grow light and since we were using the jump start lights previously I simply used this frame cut some of the line off of this ratchet here and just made a square nut on there and, and clip that on but you could do the same thing with probably one inch PVC and make your own little frame here but this has made it really easy for us to get in we have to raise it up in the mornings in order to have enough space to water the plants but I think if you really follow the same steps that we're using here, you will have incredible success in growing your own seedlings. Being able to grow your own seedlings is critical. These plants have not been sprayed with anything, no pesticides, no herbicides, no insecticides, nothing. They're, they are 100% insect free, absolutely gorgeous and healthy. If you start with a really healthy plant, you're going to get a big head start in your garden. We have found that we, we have brought plants home from well-known nurseries and had aphids on them and got an aphid problems. Here we know the plants are extremely healthy because we're personally taking care of each of these plants. And by growing your own seedlings, you can actually hand pick which plants are going to go in the garden so you're only putting the best plants in the garden. You notice there's only one plant per pot. Sometimes when you buy plants, there's two or three plants per pot and you have to kill the other two in order to have one strong plant. Here you don't have to do that. And this costs fractions of pennies to grow our own plants. So consider following these steps and using the links below to get the equipment to grow your own seeds and so you can be growing your own food year round. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, you shall not fear. And having the equipment and the ability to grow your own seeds helps you be much better prepared so you can have a longer harvest and start with healthier plants.